Welcome to the Department of Environment's presentation on our ongoing review of the Cayman Islands Marine Parks. I'm Gina Evanks Petrie, Director of the Department of Environment, and my co-presenters are Dr. John Turner, Senior Lecturer at Bangor University School of Ocean Sciences, and Tim Austin, Deputy Director for Research and Assessment at the Cayman Islands Department of Environment. In 1986, the government and people of the Cayman Islands took the very bold step of establishing a national system of protected areas. 25 years on, the islands have experienced a tremendous rate of growth and development, and the threats to the marine environment have also changed and increased. In this presentation, I will discuss the threats to Cayman waters in more detail, and will then hand over to Dr. Turner, who will tell you about the current Cayman Islands marine park system, provide you with more information on the Darwin Initiative and outline the objectives of the Marine Parks Review. He will then turn over to Tim Austin who will describe the health of Cayman's reefs and show the effects of the marine parks by sharing some of the results from the field studies that we've been conducting as part of the project over the last 18 months, as well as introduce some of the concepts that the department believes will be available to us for enhancing the effectiveness of the marine parks. I will then be back to wrap up the presentation and ask you about your vision for the marine environment and resources of the Cayman Islands over the next 25 years. As we move through the presentation, you'll be hearing us refer to the term resiliency or to resilient reefs or systems. This term simply means the ability of natural systems to remain in or return to their original state after being exposed to recurrent shocks or disturbances, such as coral bleaching, disease, overfishing, or storms and hurricanes. In the next few slides, I will be discussing some of the threats to Cayman's marine environment. When the marine parks were established 25 years ago, the parks were responding to the community's concern over two main issues, rapid coastal and tourism development and the beginning signs of overfishing, primarily as those related to overtake or overharvesting of stocks of conch and lobster. Population growth is, continues to be a concern for us and a threat to the marine environment and we're having to deal with new and emerging threats, notably those associated with climate, climate change, especially coral bleaching related to warming oceans, increasing storm intensity and frequency, sea level rise and ocean acidification. And last but not least, in the last four years, we've had to address the threats posed by an invasive species, the lionfish. With respect to coastal development, the main issues have been the transformation of many of our mangrove ecosystems to other forms of land use, primarily through reclamation from dredging in shallow sounds and lagoons. We've also seen disturbance and destruction of a lot of habitat in the form of clearing for channels for boats and of course just the removal of seagrass beds associated with, with dredging itself. The dredging impacts have over time resulted in significant amounts of sediment laden water being washed out over the seagrass beds and eventually out onto the reefs uh, causing stress to both of those systems, the seagrass beds and the reefs. In the work that we've been doing over the last 18 months, overfishing is emerging as a significant threat to the reefs in Cayman. Fishers reported catching almost 15,000 fish in one month from the waters around Grand Cayman. The majority of these were reef fish species. We've also begun to see increased amounts of top predators such as sharks being removed from our marine environment. There is a very strong link between healthy fish populations, which include healthy populations of top predators like sharks, and healthy reef environments. So this is causing the department increasing concern. In 1986, when we established the, the marine parks, our resident population was only 21,500 people. Today, that population has more than doubled. 
and the population of visitors has increased by almost 400%. What this means is that we have many more people interacting with the marine environment and with the marine resources around Cayman. Whether that is from a recreational perspective like scuba diving, visiting Stingray City, or fishing, boating, etc. It means that the use threat has increased significantly over the last 25 years. Over the next few slides, I'm going to talk about two main impacts associated with, coral, with climate change, which we are beginning to see in Cayman now increasingly. The first is coral bleaching. Coral bleaching is a stress response that, that corals exhibit when they are exposed to water temperatures that are one degree centigrade only above normal for an extended period of time. When corals are stressed by warmer waters, they expel the microscopic algae that live within the coral tissue, and the coral takes on this stark white color, hence the term coral bleaching. Healthy coral reefs are actually able to recover from coral bleaching events. The less healthy the coral reef is, the more susceptible it is to bleaching, and the more susceptible it is to coral diseases as well. This slide shows a gallery of pictures of all of the horrible diseases that actually occur on our reefs around the Cayman Islands, including the reefs around Little Cayman where there's very little human impact. In terms of storms and hurricanes, the impact from climate change relates primarily to heavy wave action that causes damage to the reefs, breaking the reforming corals, which leads to reduced shore protection and of course leads to increased beach erosion. The next two slides attempt to demonstrate the impact of more bigger and more frequent storms on our coral reef systems and shorelines. This slide is a picture of the sand key area on the southwest corner of, of Grand Cayman. And I draw your attention to two things, the shape of the key and the presence of many uh, colonies of branching corals in the back reef area. Corals like staghorn and elkhorn. This slide was taken in 2004 before Hurricane Ivan. If we take a look at that same aerial four years later in 2008, notice the change in the shape of the key and the fact that many of the colonies of branching corals have vanished. Again, healthy reefs will be able to recover from this type of damage, provided that there is sufficient coral to provide the recruits and that the environment is healthy enough for the corals to actually recruit too. All of these threats together mean that we are seeing a change in the ecosystem, the marine ecosystem around Cayman. We're seeing a change from coral reefs as they were in the 1970s with lots of hard coral cover, lots of live coral, branching coral, a lot of diversity to reefs that are primarily dominated by macroalgae. Not very much live coral and very few fish. Less coral in the reef, of course, means less habitat for fish. Less fish in the reef means that there are less herbivorous fish to eat algae. More algae on the reef means there's less space for corals to recruit to. What this means is that we have unhealthy reefs, less fish, and reduced resiliency. As I mentioned four years ago, no one imagined that we would be dealing with an invasive species threat in Cayman waters. Today we're facing the threat of the lionfish. The point that I think is important to understand here is that resilient reefs, which have a natural balance of species, are going to be most likely and better able to recover from the impact of an invasive species threat, such as the lionfish. I'm now going to turn over to Dr. Turner, who's going to talk to you about the Cayman Islands Marine Park system as it exists, and give you more information on the Darwin Initiative and the objectives of the Marine Park Review. 
Cayman Islands have a rich and vibrant marine environment which has benefited from 25 years of a world-class conservation system. The Department of the Environment had the foresight, with the support of people 25 years ago, to put in place a marine protected area system. Now there are many marine protected areas around the world, about four and a half thousand of them, but most of these are actually unmanaged. And the difference in the Cayman is that the protected area system has been enforced, it has um, been very well documented with good maps for, for, for people to see and use. At sea there are mooring buoys for, for, for boats to use and um, there are signs that show when a boat is in or outside of a marine protected area. These clearly show the zones. The rich and vibrant marine environment is, is very evident. If you dive today, you can still see dive sites where there, there are many fish. The water is clear, which attracts many tourists to these islands. And there are still sites where there are many healthy corals, and also sponges which have not suffered from the disease that um, you have already heard about. The foresight for protection also extended to protecting the spawning aggregations of fish such as the grouper and, and many other species. And by protecting these sites, um, future generations of the fish are being protected. So these sites are a very important area of protection for Cayman. In other places around the Caribbean, these spawning aggregations have not been protected. The Cayman Islands Marine Protection System is well documented in a series of maps that are widely available on the islands. 16.7% of the Cayman Islands narrow shelf is actually protected by marine parks. These are no-take zones, they are places where there can be no extraction of fish or other organisms. There are other protected zones and some of the largest of these are the replenishment zones that cover about 24% of the narrow shelf, but these zones only protect conch and lobster. It is important that these areas, which also extend and cover mangroves and seagrasses, are protected in the future. The reason for this is these different habitats are actually connected. Species use different habitats during different parts of their life cycle. And a good example here is the grey snapper. This animal um, will as an adult live on the reef but it will produce larvae that are in open water and these fish develop and when they're very young they will live within the mangroves. They will then move out into the seagrass beds as they grow larger and then finally back out onto the coral reef when they are adults. So it's very important that the full range of habitats used by an animal are protected within the zones. At present, um, the, this connectivity is not totally protected within the marine park system and this is one reason why an enhancement to the system is necessary. Now in the review that we're undertaking, it's these sorts of topics that we really need to address. Back when the marine parks were first designed, back in 1986, the threats were very different as we have already heard. But today we're facing different threats and really it's unlikely to expect that a marine park system established so long ago is still really going to be fit for purpose. As a result we're undertaking this review and this review is funded through the Darwin Initiative of the Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs of the UK Government. It's a partnership between the Department of the Environment Bangor University and the Nature Conservancy, which is the US's largest um, conservation organisation. Our aim then is to review the current marine parks and see how to enhance them to meet current day threats. We're now 18 months into a three-year project and we have assessed the current health of the reefs both inside and outside of the marine parks around all three islands. We're also assessing the fish that are in the no-take marine 
areas and those outside. And one of the important aspects that we measure here is something called spillover. Now spillover is effectively um, where in a marine protected area, because the fish cannot be extracted, you get more of them, they grow larger, and a larger fish proportionately produces a lot more young. Um, a foot-long fish can produce about, say it's a grey snapper, it might produce 360,000 young, but a fish twice that size can produce 3.4 million young. Overspill is important because what this means is those young fish need to move out to find new habitat and therefore they will overspill the protected area and they will move out onto surrounding reefs where they can be legally caught. So this overspill effect is an important effect of the marine protected system. We're also assessing the fishing pressure in the Cayman Islands. There is no commercial fishing but there is recreational and subsistence fishing. And this is done by interviews with people who are engaged in fishing, where we find out where they fish, how much they fish, and what sorts of techniques they use in their fishing. Following these assessments of, of the reef and the organisms upon it, um, we then use marine park planning computer software to identify how and where would be ideal options for the enhancement of the Cayman Islands marine parks. Conservationists worldwide accept that for conservation to be effective you need to protect between 30 and 50 percent of ecosystems or organisms habitats. Now this does not necessarily mean that we need to protect 30 to 50 percent of the whole shelf of the Caymans, but we need, do need to protect 30 to 50 percent of representative habitats. This computer software can generate maps that can um, identify areas of habitat to 30 or we can work at the 50% level um, and having done this we can produce new maps which are essentially models of the protected area system. The problem with models is that they're not necessarily realistic and as a result we then have to consult with local people to see which of these options are actually more practical, more acceptable to them and therefore the next stage of the project involves a consultation with Caymanian people to advise us um, what they think would be the best form of acceptable protected system. So we can gain a detailed knowledge of the habitats and the way that these are used but what we need is a clear vision of the desired future state for the marine environment of the Caymanian people, which has public support so that we can put in the proven protection measures. During the project, coral reef surveys are conducted at 62 sites around all three islands. These surveys are undertaken within and outside the marine parks, and these involve surveys of fish, coral recruitment, algal cover, and I'm going to hand over now to Tim Austin who's going to describe some of the results from these surveys. 